Hi, so if you recall from the last video, uh, I've got a new study laptop, but I've said my desktop computer would also be replaced. And in fact, literally that same day, I've got a new desktop computer. To be exact, it is this thing. The Lenovo ThinkStation P330 Tiny. It says Think Center on the front, but I've got the arm management open, and right there it says Think Station, so that's a pretty weird thing. But no matter what the model name is, it is a tiny computer from a Lenovo with an Intel Core i5 processor of a later generation and double the amount of RAM from the previous computer, 8 gigabytes versus 4 gigabytes. So I've bought this computer about 17 days ago after a long trip, not through one, not through two, but through three uh, second-hand computer shops. And it was a bit of haggling in the Dutch sense, but I ended up paying 500 euros for a machine that was originally intended to be sold still second-hand by the same store for about 600 euro and originally would have costed quite a bit more and there's another surprise I've got from him so right there center is between the four-way switch box and the earbuds wireless charging pad it could be used for any sort of wireless I just use it for my wireless earbud because my phone still doesn't support wireless charging it's this little optical drive it's exactly just a generic no round optical drive that is based on a design that is commonly used in laptops until laptops then had to get thinner and thinner and thinner and can no longer include an optical drive and right away you can see that the optical drive doesn't connect quite directly from the optical drive to the computer right away it connects through the monitor and the monitor connects back through USB cable over there to a computer and the same thing happens with a little 2.4 gigahertz mouse dongle it plugs into the computer like so the mouse connects to it and the monitor connects back to the computer over there so in the last video I have shown how the seamless transition between the desktop and the study laptop works using nothing but a VGA and a DVI cable the monitor had both VGA and DVI, and still does, it's the same thing. Uh, the VGA was connected straight into my uh, desktop computer through its VGA port, and the DVI connected via a DVI to HDMI cable into my study laptop to its HDMI port. The monitor would automatically detect which port receives a signal first, and keep itself on that port. And that is how I was simply able to set my laptop to sleep and uh, it turn on the desktop computer. Once it has uh, a signal, the monitor automatically switches over to that. When I open the laptop after shutting this computer down, the laptop would automatically appear on the screen. However, this computer no longer has a VGA port that the original computer had. And so I've got this little adapter over here this is a cheap well it's not exactly cheap it cost me about 25 euros uh, HDMI to VGA adapter so right there it plugs into the HDMI port of the computer let's try and do it with my hand it's almost impossible to and then to the other end I've connected the VGA cable and that in turn connects over there to the VGA port of the monitor leaving the DVI port at the other side um, free to connect to my laptop over there you can also see the cheap little earbuds from the uh, return trip from Peru, Lima to Amsterdam that I still use over at home and simply plug into that phone jack on the switch box. 
Now I have immediately after purchasing and checking if it works at all installed the uh, Linux Mint operating system on it exactly as I've showed before in another video. However there is a considerable difference. However this time I've uh, configured the uh, partitioning of the hard drive correctly or at least correctly that in the way that allows the most storage space to be used by Linux and there's just a small 32 gig Windows partition right next to that for little Windows applications that I might still need from time to time. On the old computer it was the other way around. I had still quite a couple of files and programs on Windows I wanted to keep so I just shrunk the Windows partition a little bit now uh, it's a different day than when I recorded the uh, talking head and the footage that showed the computer. But now, let me set this water bottle aside, this water bottle, and do an actual startup comparison between this computer and the study laptop. I'm also saying that the study laptop, again, it runs Windows 11. This new little computer right there, over there runs both Windows 10 and Linux Mint in a dual boot but I had standard it boots in Linux Mint so I've got a little stopwatch over there let's see how long it takes 3, 2, 1 so I'm waiting for it to boot but, um, uh, gonna open the web browser and see what happens. One and they could see the total time thirty two, thirty three, thirty four. 35, 37 seconds to the desktop. It's connected to the internet immediately and uh, I've set the browser over there. It is opened within about 50 seconds. No, that wasn't very exactly. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the shutdown process. In three, two, one. From clicking the shutdown button to the power save, uh, this is fast. Nine seconds and thirty-one hundred, literally. And now let's do the same thing to the study laptop, which again is running Windows 11. So my stopwatch is fully reset. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. It does say pretty long at the base train, longer than the old of a new computer. Uh, ah, we now have a long on screen. Let me enter my password. And there we go. Let's open the browser. In about 1 minute and 17 seconds. So, this does really taunt Windows' extreme inefficiencies. Just throwing down the time over there. Oh, uh, Microsoft Teams wanted to start up as well. Now it is obviously the time to shut down. So let's quickly reset the stopwatch and go to the screen there. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. As we recall, when Linux Mint only took about 9 seconds to shut down, Windows 11 easily surpasses that. 
but that has been almost a trope generally in uh, any computer anyway. In fact, it takes forever to shut down. And we end at about 22 seconds over there. So that is the side of comparison done. And with that, the video has ended. See you next time. Bye bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.